Good day, everyone. Yesterday in my grade 12 math class, we had a little quiz where students were expected to solve a trigonometric equation that required that they first use identities to put the equation into a certain state that would allow them to solve it. And I told them that I would be posting a solution, so that's what this video is of. This was the quiz, solve this equation, two cosine squared of theta minus tangent of theta, cos of theta minus one is equal to zero. And they were asked to determine solutions that were in the domain between zero and two pi, including two pi. I always like to tell my students to rewrite an equation if they're solving an equation or an expression if they're simplifying an expression to rewrite the details of the question, the mathematics of the question without all the words so they can focus on it. The problem of course here is that this equation is a mixture of different types of trigonometric ratios. There are tangent ratios and cosine ratios. So you need to recognize that the tangent of theta can be replaced with sine of theta over cosine of theta. That's what we call a quotient identity. And then the equation becomes this. And what I would tell my students is it's much preferable to write it this way rather than to write that sine of theta over cosine of theta shifted up, which is admittedly how it would appear probably in a textbook or in print. The reason why I would prefer students to write it this way is it makes it visually, I think, just a little bit easier to see that what's going to happen in this next step is you're going to cancel the cosine of thetas because in that middle term, cosine of theta is a factor of the numerator and a factor of the denominator. Again, uh, my advice to students at this level, no matter how skilled they are, is to rewrite things and don't try to do too much at once. So some students may know what's going to happen next, but I would prefer that you rewrite the resulting equation without those cosine thetas in it. So we have two cos squared theta minus sine theta minus one equals zero. And now the issue is, and we've encountered this situation many times in many equations and also in proofs, that you see it's going to be a quadratic equation, but you have cosine squared being the quadratic term, well, two cosine squared of theta and sine of theta being the linear term. So you have to rewrite this equation in some way so that it is quadratic and linear in one type of trigonometric ratio. And we can use the Pythagorean identity of sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one here. If I rearrange that for cosine squared of theta, I get cosine squared of theta is the same as one minus sine squared. So my next step is wherever I see in this equation cosine squared of theta, I'm going to replace it with 1 minus sine squared of theta. And that's what I do. So now instead of having 2 cos squared of theta minus sine theta minus 1 equals 0, I have 2 multiplied by in brackets 1 minus sine squared theta, close brackets, and then minus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Of course, we're going to have to multiply that 2 by the 1 and also multiply that 2 by the sine squared when we expand this out. And that's why the brackets are very important here. So two times one is two, two times negative sine squared of theta is negative two sine squared theta, minus sine theta minus one equals zero. And now, you know, it's a full blown quadratic trigonometric equation. We want to zero all quadratic equations, but the preference is to have the quadratic term, this is the quadratic term here, this negative two sine squared theta. The preference is for your quadratic term to be positive because in the next step where we're gonna factor the resulting quadratic equation, the factorization is simpler if the first term, the quadratic term is positive. Just a, a brief interlude here in the solution to this quiz problem some of my students didn't do that. Some of them didn't zero the equation in that fashion and they ended up with a negative quadratic term. It becomes more complicated to factor if your quadratic term is negative. So I would prefer to move all of my terms to the other side of the equation, to the right side of the equation. So the negative two sine squared theta becomes two sine squared theta. The negative sine theta becomes positive sine theta. 
2 minus 1 is 1 on the left of the equation, so when I move it to the right, I'm left with 0 equals 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 1. And of course, even though I moved everything to the right, I probably would just write the equation as 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. So now you have to factor this. This is a pretty run-of-the-mill quadratic trig equation. We've seen this thing many times before, whether it's sine or cosine. You're going to have to put 2 sine of theta and sine of theta in those two positions, the first terms of the binomials, so that when you FOIL this out, you're going to get 2 sine squared theta. Your last product in your multiplication of those two binomials has to give you a 1. Well, I mean, it has to give you a negative 1, but let's just start with a 1. And that means your only options for those two positions in the binomials are 1 and 1. And now, with a little playing around, in order for you to get positive 1 sine theta, it needs to be 2 sine theta minus 1 and sine theta plus 1. And we're getting very close to the end here. That means that this factor is equal to 0 or this factor is equal to 0. And you can rearrange each of the factors, getting for one part of the quadratic, sine of theta equals 1 over 2. And for the other part, sine of theta equals negative 1. Now, I'm going to go to the unit circle. We have looked at in the past how you could use your calculator and the concept of reference angles. That's pretty clunky, and it gets a little awkward in particular situations because sometimes the terminal arm is not in a particular quadrant, and that causes some confusion. So I'm going to go with the unit circle. The sine of a rotation angle is always the y coordinate on the unit circle. So when we take a look at the unit circle, and don't forget the radius of the unit circle is 1, and it's centered at the origin, where on the unit circle is the sine of the rotation angle equal to 1 over 2. Well, it's equal to 1 over 2 wherever the y coordinate on the unit circle is 1 over 2. And by now, everybody, I hope, is fairly well versed with that. That would be these two points. And then we can move on to the next equation. Where is the sine of theta equal to negative 1? Well, it's equal to negative 1. The position where the rotation angle lands, where sine of theta is negative 1, is where the y coordinate is negative 1, and that's at the bottom. And I'm throwing in the coordinates here of these points just to drive home the fact that those two points above the x-axis each have coordinates that have y values of 1 half, and the point at the bottom is a y coordinate of negative 1 over 2. Now, don't forget, these are just positions. We talk about this a lot in class. These are not solutions to the equation. These are only positions where the rotation angle has the particular sine value. We're looking at rotation angles between 0 and 2 pi, and including 2 pi, which is not going to be a solution. So the question becomes, for this point that I've highlighted in quadrant 1, what is the rotation angle that takes us to that terminal arm starting at 0? And the answer is it's pi over 6 radians. Keeping with the first equation of sine of theta equals 1 half, what is the rotation angle that takes us to this point I've highlighted in quadrant 2? Well, that's 5 pi over 6. And finally, going to the second equation, sine of theta equals negative 1, What's the rotation angle starting from 0 that will take us to that point where the y coordinate is negative 1? In other words, where sine of theta is negative 1? And the answer is 3 pi over 2. But there's an issue here, and it's one that you have to keep on top of. You have to really, really try to remember to check something. Sometimes there are non-permissible values in equations. And when you take a look at the original equation, this is the original equation. The very first thing we did was we replaced tangent of theta with sine of theta over cos of theta. And hopefully you caught the fact that there is a hidden denominator within tangent of theta, that cosine of theta that's under the sine of theta. So tangent of theta is actually sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, and you're not allowed to divide by zero. And that means that that cosine of theta is not allowed 
to be zero. So let's go back to our solutions. We've established that we have three solutions, pi over six, five pi over six, and three pi over two, except that cosine of theta is not allowed to be zero. Now, cosine of a rotation angle is the x-coordinate, and the x-coordinate at three pi over two is zero. So it looks as though, according to our work, that three pi over two is in fact a solution to the equation. But because 3 pi over 2 results in cos of theta equaling 0, 3 pi over 2 is non-permissible, which means we kick it over the boards. And that tells you that there are only two solutions in the domain from 0 to 2 pi, and they are pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. I hope that was helpful to anybody watching and to all of my students. This is a typical question that you would expect to see on an exam, and we do have an exam coming up next week. This could be a written response question for three marks. This could be a multiple choice question. It could be a numerical response question. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Talk to everybody later. Take care.